about some of our favorite things when it comes to uh, photography. Um, some of our favorite things to hate. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that, yeah. Um, I mean, at the top of my list, I think the biggest thing that I hate in the photo world is probably this new, like, orange and teal phase that we're seeing everywhere. Yeah, I would completely agree. And like all of the ph photography trends that we're going to talk about, they are fantastic when they first come out because it means somebody has tried a new technique or has tried a new editing style and it's gone viral and it looks fantastic. And then it reaches a point like your favorite song on the radio that gets played too much and you end up hating it. <laughs> right. And uh, Orange and Teal is definitely one of those that has been done to death. Yeah, um, it's crazy because today I was coordinating uh, a mood board with a model. And I was looking at specific things, like I was listening to her, she's like, I really have this very ethereal look. Yes, the model said that to me. And um, so I go to the hands and I'm like, ethereal. And I see all these Argentile images and I'm like, oh God, please don't do Argentile, please don't do Argentile. Oh my goodness. So I specifically created a mood board that doesn't include orange and teal. There you go. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, you'll work with people and be like, I want this. I want this look because it's popular on Instagram. You know, and it's, uh, it's just so frustrating sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, people, people get their eyes closed and they can't see past that, that one thing. And I think that, like, you know, that's a complicated issue because... There are photographers that really care about photography and then there are photographers that really just care about Instagram. And right. I feel like just feeding that algorithm does not promote creativity. No, absolutely not. I mean, it just becomes boring. And yeah. you, you just, you're just shutting yourself down, absolutely. Yeah, but I mean, to also be fair, that was the problem even many years ago. Like, I mean, another trend that I feel kind of needs to die, HDR, especially HDR portraits. <laughs> yeah that's a fish shaker one yes <laughs> hdr man and when it's done right it can be absolutely beautiful and i still love a good hdr picture but it gets pushed to the extreme so much and it like burns your retinas out um, <laughs> when it's done right and it's like the thing with, with any of these photo editing techniques when they're done right they're beautiful when somebody's trying to replicate it but doesn't quite know how to do it it can butcher a good image <laughs> <laughs> sort of like people turning the clarity setting all the way up and then creating halos around people that's actually yeah, exactly. a thing now like people like that that boggles my mind honestly <laughs> <laughs> no i like i was going through reddit and like i was looking at our pics and i was like there's so many halos on this image and people are like i love that halo like effect it's so aesthetic and i'm like why aesthetic aesthetic yeah <laughs> i'm like not really the, not the word i would choose to describe that <laughs> yeah no seriously um tell me about something else that you think that really needs to die man um uh, one of the biggest ones for me and you mentioned it at the top is selective color and if you don't know what that is it's people creating a black and white image with only one color present in the in the picture so you could have a black and white image with a girl whose dress was red and the red color still shows through um, and again, it's one of those things in certain situations, it can be really good, but you go on Instagram and you see these pictures everywhere of just the most random colors being selected that make zero sense. <laughs> yeah. And it just, it just drives me nuts. Like, why, why did you pick that? And it, it can be a good tool to help tell a story in an image. But again, I think people do it just to do it without understanding why they're doing it. And I feel like also a couple of years ago, it evolved in advertising. Like I was seeing like black and white images and instead of there being just selective color, like a person would be fully in color. Yeah. Yeah. And that would blow my mind. I was like, okay, this is kind of cool, but people were hating it and I'm still seeing it like pop up every now and again. You know, sometimes I see people hating on it. Sometimes I see people not, yeah. um, I guess to each their own. It but, really just depends on the image and if it works for that particular image. It doesn't work for, for every single picture you do, for sure. Yeah, no, I mean, like, but also, like, when you're doing that, I feel like you have to ask yourself whether or not the colors in the image are really important. Otherwise, like, turn the whole thing into a black and white and just do whatever you want to with it. Yep, absolutely. 
Yeah, like, I mean, the images that I was editing earlier on of Micah, um, you know, his skin tone is associated with orange, and then his shirt was associated with blue, and his pants were purple, and then the background was green. So the colors are really important there because they are providing some separation, but otherwise, yeah, no. Yeah, it becomes an issue. Yeah. Another thing that I hate, um, we talked about HDR, we talked about spot color. Yep. We talked about orange and teal. Um, I'm going to get up and do this just for funsies. <laughs> so the maternity shoots where everyone is like this. Oh gosh. Yeah. Like this, like, yep. I just ate like half a pizza. So like, I'm, I'm going to have a baby <laughs> anytime soon. I was going to say, that's the Sunday afternoon resting pose on the couch after a big lunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah but i mean i look at maternity photos and they all have these images and i'm just like you know this has been happening for over a decade can we not try harder like can we not do something different like i don't know like incorporate like fairy lights or something like that yeah yeah absolutely and it's one of the things that's really going to help people grow as a photographer if you, if you can come up with your own unique ideas and i mean that's how photography trends get started right it's, it's a brand new completely original unique idea and I think we just fall back onto these onto these images and also because you know the web is littered with these images people see that and think that's what's good when as photographers we should be elevating ourselves and creating new ideas yeah no i completely agree with you but i mean that also goes back to what we were saying before about the algorithms um yep people are just like oh i just want this for the algorithm and i'm like and uh, no absolutely and there's another big one as well right now that's really big again on instagram and it's the forced perspective images where you'll see like a guy's hands like this and cards would be flying out like he's doing a magic trick or, um, you know, there'll be a knife coming down, cutting up a coconut. And it's, you go on Instagram, those things are everywhere and it's fantastic. And it was a great technique to start off with, but now it is absolutely everywhere. Do you know what kind of images I'm talking about? I do. Yeah. I've been seeing yeah. a lot of YouTube videos on these things exactly yeah that, that's another big thing and it was great about a year ago when it started and now it's everyone's just trying to copy it instead of okay maybe copy it but then build on it and do something else with it rather mm -hmm. than just copy yeah mm -hmm. yeah i mean no i agree with you i just really wish that you know people shared our mentality with that like because i feel like it would push more photographers forward like it's okay i feel to copy like for personal reasons and be like, okay, fine. I'm just doing this just to get started. But then after that, yes, find a way to make it evolve. Absolutely. Yeah. You've, you've absolutely got to do that. And I just saw a comment from Richard Swanson, Richard. Yes. Um, the Boker effect and, and just having eyes in focus is another big one. And, and actually this is what made me want to start talking about this for this, for this episode. We had a comment on, I think it was on the Canon RF 24105 review and it was, F7.1, what's the point? I don't know if you saw that <laughs> comment or not. And I'm like, really? Have we got to the point now where F7.1 is completely trash? <laughs> and it, it just got me thinking, you know, it's, and it's, this has been a trend that's been going on for many years where you do a portrait and only the eye is in focus and everything else is completely obliterated. And I think people need to understand that you can create some beautiful images if you just stop your lens down just a little bit to give a bit more perspective as to where you are what kind of story you're trying to tell like about envi environmental portrait but um if you do a search for portrait on instagram you'll bring up millions of images with completely blown up backgrounds where everything is shot wide open yeah and i mean let me know what your thoughts are on this i in some ways feel like always shooting wide open is doing a disservice to your subject because you're only focusing on just this one part of them instead of stopping down and then showing their face and really getting all of them in focus. And I feel like it's more for a photographer to just be like, oh, look at all this bokeh that I can get instead yes. of like, hey, look at this wonderful person that's right in front of me. I completely agree. You know, I have never had a single client in my career say, man, that bokeh is amazing. <laughs> not once have I ever said that have I ever heard that you know and it is totally is it's totally an ego trip for, for a photographer who can nail a shot on someone's eye and get the eye completely tacked sharp and everything else is blown out yeah um you know it's it, as you're saying tack sharp it's actually making me think about wedding photography and like 
I've seen guys like Pixel Peep wedding images and they're like, oh, this isn't sharp. And like, I can't really see all the many details, but like, I've never heard a bride be like, wow, I really like the way my pores look in this image. <laughs> you haven't? I have, no, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but seriously, I mean like, yes, find a balance. Um, and I think that that's really what we have to do as photographers, but we also have to get out of our own minds and just remember that, mm -hmm. you know, we're photographing someone else. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it, it really goes into asking what, what they want. And if that's what they want, then totally fine. Give the client what they want. But we should also, as photographers, be opening their eyes up to other creative possibilities as well. Yeah. Um, what are other trends that you hate? Because I've got a couple more. Um, aside from just specific types of photos, um, one thing that really grinds my gears are, is pixel peeping. And it's something we have definitely got to get out of as photographers. It is destroying, it's taking the joy out of photography. You know, the digital age has done so many wonderful things for us. Um, and, you know, being able to use programs like Photoshop and Lightroom and Capture One where we can really zoom in on those details is amazing. But it's created this mindset that, oh my gosh, at 300%, my image is terrible. My whole image is, is rubbish now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's, it's so ridiculous. And just, just stop, just stop pixel peeping. It's, it's toxic. It's not worth it. Um, you need to start looking at the bigger picture and look at the whole image rather than an individual picture of a house on a horizon. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, as you're saying that, you know, I'm looking at this photo from Brooke Di Donato that I have right behind the computer and like one of Paul's images is over there and then Mark's image is way back there. So like, I care about looking at the whole and at the end of the day, I think most people think about looking at the whole, but I mean, some photographers are just like, I need to see these details. What yeah. are they? What is that? Yeah, right. Look at that grain in there. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, right? Um, on that, it's. I feel it's the same thing with high ISOs. Yep. Yeah, we've created this artificial limitation at ISO 6400 for a reason that I can't think of right now. Um, why that became the benchmark, I have no idea, but... You know what, as, as a photographer, do what you got to do to get the image either you want or your client wants, whether it's at ISO 6400 or higher or lower. It's not that big of a deal. It's really, really not. Unless you're printing ab absolutely ginormous sizes, it's not going to be an issue. And even we've seen what the, the X100V, um, you've done a 6400 ISO test and that big print, it looked beautiful. And you could okay. probably push it, you could probably push it even more. It's ISO is not the a big deal that a lot of people make it out to be yeah no i completely agree with you um that and i mean like a lot of issues have gone away like banding and like mm -hmm. chroma noise and all that stuff like you're gonna see it above that but like even twelve thousand eight hundred, like you're still pretty good with pretty much any camera that you shoot with these days i completely agree and go back to the nikon z50 which you know it is what it is but that camera at high iso was phenomenal it was absolutely beautiful. And that's from an APS-C camera that costs less than a thousand bucks. So if you're getting any other modern camera, you can just shoot and be happy. But Brett, it's APS-C. It's not full frame. Oh, man. Uh, We've got to throw it in the trash then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's a whole other problem. Like people sitting there and just completely hating on everything that's not full frame. Yep. Completely agree. That's just to keeping up with the Joneses mentality. Got to have full frame. Yeah. Well, you can't be professional. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's also really weird, too, because I'm really wondering, like, what's going to happen to the market? Like, we were talking today that, like, Micro Four Thirds will probably get even smaller. APS-C will probably get even smaller because full frame mm -hmm. is so small right now. Absolutely. And they're getting smaller and smaller as, as time goes on. So there's definitely going to have to be a shift in, in those other lines to, to differentiate because full frame is becoming quite a dominant force. Totally. Other things that I hate, I have them in a list here. Oh, the whole idea of crushing the blacks mm -hmm. all the time. I'm like, guys, really? We don't really need to see all of the details. Like, yeah. You know, you know where that actually came from? I don't know if, you're, if a lot of people are really aware of this. So the idea for crushing the blacks originally came from the analog film photography revival when someone was just scanning incorrectly. Really? 
Yeah. And they were scanning huh. black and white stuff. And it was like, oh, I just sort of like this look. And then everyone else was just like, yeah, I think I'm going to do the same thing. And then there were a whole presets coming out like, yeah, we're going to do the same thing. And this is how T-Max looks. And, and there like, goes a trend starting. Exactly. <laughs> yep. And everyone was just like, oh, it looks like film. I'm like, no, it doesn't. What are you doing? <laughs> Why do you hate happiness? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah. So the idea of crushing the blacks, I see it way too much. I just think like don't do it let the black levels be the black levels let the white levels yep. beat the white levels like i mean part of an image can be blown out or it can be not recoverable from a shadow like who cares if if that detail is not important to the photo who cares you know do, do you you know do people not understand that some of the best photos in history are completely imperfect photos <laughs> you know i mean you look at some of the best photos ever taken there's there's highlights blown out. There's details lost in the shadows. Who cares? Look at the image and look at what the story is telling. Yeah, yeah. You know, these, these things are so arbitrary. It's, it's just not important. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you hate? Because after this, I have one more. Go ahead. What's your last one? <laughs> I think that there is this whole um, mentality, but also of, I, as time went on, uh, and I've been guilty of doing this too. I feel like it's a very toxic thing to do. Shooting models in front of urban decay and graffiti. Um, I think that it has bled into uh, urban exploring and breaking into places and just taking a model there and shooting them for the thrill. And I don't condone breaking into places. I don't condone uh, putting people in dangerous situations. Mm -hmm. And I really don't condone like breaking the law. I will never do that. Um, but it came from the idea that like, oh, like there's all this graffiti. Why don't we take a model and shoot them in front of it and, and like contrast the gorgeous model with like this crazy background and people were falling in love with it. And I mean, I did it too in a way, but it was more in front of street art, which is far different than graffiti. Um, but I think that it's just something that we need to stop doing now. I mean, mm -hmm. I've stopped doing this trend. I think I'm just like, I just find ways to actually be more conceptual. And I think that we just need to let that trend sort of die out with what it was 10 years ago. I completely agree. And then adding on to that is the shooting on train tracks, which is just absolutely ridiculous. People should never, ever, ever do that. Um, not only can you get I know in Oklahoma, it might be different than everywhere else. In Oklahoma, if you get caught, it's a $10,000 fine for you and a $10,000 fine for your model instantly, um, which is completely ridiculous. It's not ridiculous, but it's ridiculous if you get into yourself into that situation. Um, and then obviously just the safety aspect of it. Why would you put your client in danger to post a picture on Instagram to make yourself look cool? I completely agree with you. Um, what I find even crazier is as I've looked through and paid through like Instagram ads sometimes, I will see some of that like urban exploration or like breaking into a place on top of a rooftop or mm -hmm. like railroad photos. And I'm like, guys, why are you paying for this and condoning the fact that like this is a problem, that like this is what people are doing? Like, it's not cool. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're a, if you're a photographer with a good ethic set, you will tell... If someone requests it, you will absolutely shoot them down and explain why that's not a good idea. You know, I used to do a lot of senior portraits and that was the one background so many parents always requested was, I want a shot on a train track because it signifies the journey going forward for my, <laughs> for, for my kid, you know? It's the journey on the train track to life. And I'm like, do you know how ridiculous that sounds? <laughs> we can put your so, kid on a highway in front of cars instead. Right. <laughs> I mean, I would rather turn down a job than have to put myself and a client in that situation. That's just yeah. me, though. Yeah. Um, your kids didn't want anything like that, did they? No, thankfully not. <laughs> okay. Um, let's check the chat real quick. So Richard Swanson saying, lots of great lenses are trashed by the internet reviewers, and there are tons of them. I completely agree with you. Yep. Um, I remember for years, like, K 
Canon lenses, and I mean, I was guilty of this as well too. When you look at them on DxO Mark, it was like, oh yeah, they're not as sharp. And then when I stopped shooting with Canon lenses for a while, I was going to like Sigma and Sony, and then I was like, there's no character on these things. Like, I don't mm -hmm. really like it. And then suddenly I went back to Ken and I was like, oh, this is what I was missing. Yeah. So many les lenses go for technical perfection now. And, it's, you know, some lenses do just have that character that makes you get drawn to them. Mm -hmm. um, I like that you're talking about printing right now. My print directly, this is T. Martin saying this, from the camera to printer as my litmus test. Nice. It's, uh, and it's a practice I encourage inspiring photographers to pursue as a means of identifying and adjusting the styles. Completely agree with you on this. Yeah. And in addition to that too, because I was talking about jumping from the camera to the computer, also find ways to do certain styles and profiles in camera. I know you can totally do it with Canon. I know you can absolutely do it with Sony. Fujifilm Olympus comes with tons as it is. Um, you know, I've never, I, no, actually, I should not say I haven't done this before. I had done it with the 6D original before, and it was very fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you ever done straight from camera printer, Brett? Once, a very long time ago. <laughs> it's not something I can say I'm like an expert at, for sure. Yeah. I'll probably give it a try again. I'm just waiting for more ink to come in for our printer so I can continue yep. a whole bunch of tests. Um, Steve Watson said middle prints. I think he was talking about that in reference to uh, the crushed blacks or something. Yeah. Yeah. Ten thousand dollars not worth the risk. No, totally. Nope. Absolutely not worth the risk. Risking your life is not worth the risk. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone ten thousand dollars. Exactly. Yep. Let me see if there's any comments on Facebook. It doesn't look like there are any. Okay, that's fine. I'm alright with that. Um. Did you have any other trends that you hate, Brett? Um, just the, the current fix it in Photoshop culture <laughs> rather than, you know, I'm going to, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to take a picture and I'll, I'll, don't worry. I'll, I'll just fix it in post later on. Um, how about learn how to take your image in camera right the first time? Yeah. I and agree if, with you. And, and if you don't know how to expose an image properly, maybe shoot in JPEG and learn so that when you get it into post, you can't fix it. And then you can go back out and figure out what you've done wrong. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And I mean, that's not us saying that, like, you shouldn't use post-production, but you shouldn't use it as a crutch. Right. Yeah. I mean, I go as far as saying, like, I don't really think Ansel Adams was really a photographer. I think he was more of a master chemist that just happened to also shoot great photos. But, mm -hmm. I mean, most of his work, like, most of the magic happened in the dark room. Um, I've gotten into many arguments with people about this, and sometimes I've won, sometimes I haven't, so... Yeah. Um, something else sort of annoying me in the photo world. Um, there's this photographer, Brandon Wolfel, that uh, does this thing with like a whole bunch of fairy lights all over it, uh, like his images. And uh, I just see it all over Instagram. And I think it's overdone as well, too. I don't know if you've seen yep. these, Brett. Oh, yeah, man. I see them all the time. Got to get those little bokeh balls in the background from the Christmas lights. Oh, my yep. God. <laughs> way too many of them and like they're all in yes. youtube videos too and like sometimes i understand it for like an effect mm -hmm. but um i don't understand it being used all the time i think it's just tacky after a while like they're cool in your bedroom because you know you want an ambiance but you don't really need that in like everything you do exactly i completely agree yeah um a really good alternative that i've been working with actually is uh there is these little lamps that like spin around and they have these pieces of film on them and uh you know they can work like um basically like a projector like you can take slide film you can load it in there and then just like project stuff but they usually come with like stars or like um planets or like happy birthday or something like that and then gotcha. you just like let them go around and i think that using those and using words and photography and like other shapes like that could be really cool yeah that actually sounds really pretty interesting i'd like to see some of that yeah i'm gonna be working on some of that this week later on i have a shoot but yeah very cool yeah um any other comments it looks like there are 
So agree. Uh, 10,000. Oh, that's two or five bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I had a good chuckle at that one when I saw that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, so agree with Brett. I'll admit I've been snobbish about getting it right in camera. However, as I learn and grow, I'm finding patience between getting it right in camera and learning some post-production techniques. Wonderful. Yep, that's the way to do it. Yeah, wonderful. Um, I think everyone usually starts out in Lightroom and they're just like, you ask them about how they're editing and they're usually just like, oh, I just mess around until I get something I like. Yep. Um, and that works, but like after a while, like you got to figure out like a way to like make it work. Is, are those your dogs in the background? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on out there. <laughs> they're adorable. Um, but no, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel, I've been saying this for a while, I feel like there's a difference between a photographer and a photo editor, and you can be both, uh, but some people usually have a better skill in one or the other, and I feel like photography is photography, and photo editing is photo editing. I mean, yep. we used to have labs that did this stuff, like Robert Kappa almost never saw his film. He just sent it right. off to Magnum, and they developed it. Yep, absolutely, and I think that goes also into another pet peeve, which is, um, people creating images and calling them photos instead of saying, hey, this is a composite or this is, you know, whatever. Just just be honest about it. I'm clapping. <laughs> I am clapping Yay. so much. I agree with you because I see this in Reddit. And the other day I was actually going to write a post about this and I pitched it to Dan because Dan, I know, hates this stuff as well too. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know, I agree with you on this, but I'm not really passionate about it. I think you'll do a better job. I'm like, okay, fine. And I was going to go write it on Friday. And then I saw that there were so many complaints in the Reddit thread that realized that it was a composite. And there were so many people that were like, oh, this is a beautiful photograph. And then suddenly a bunch of people got upvoted saying, no, it's a composite and it's fake. Right. And the photo was deleted. Oh, really? Cooled yeah. out and couldn't handle it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it wasn't the photo that was deleted. The composite was deleted because it is a composite. Ah. It is not a photograph. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there are ways to do that in camera. Like Olympus has live composite. There's multiple mm -hmm. exposure. There's double exposure. There's all that kind of stuff. And I mean, they all have different settings. I mean, there's additive, there's bright, there's average. There's all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So I think we should really try stuff like that as well. Like, you know, just get beyond like just snapping the shutter. Like think more about the post-production. No, sorry, not the post-production, the pre-production phase mm -hmm. of things. And I will just say, you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with creating comp composite images. I'll say some of my favorite images are composites, but be upfront about it and be honest with the work you've done in Photoshop if you've used it because that's a difficult skill to learn if you can really put it off and make it look good. So be, be proud of your work, but just don't pass it off to something it's not. Yeah, no, absolutely. Being truthful, I think, is the best thing. Yep. Honesty is the best policy. I was always told that in Catholic school. And it's still true today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, just going to check Facebook one more time. It doesn't look like we have any more comments. No, it does not. Okay, cool. Um, I'm all right wrapping it up here three minutes early if you are. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Brett, thank you for uh, joining me on this show. And uh, I appreciate also joining you. I appreciate um, you too, sir. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I appreciate all of our viewers. I appreciate all of our people in Zoom right now. I appreciate all of our viewers on Facebook. Uh, thank you guys so much. Without you, a blogger would not be possible. Um, and yeah, we'll be back next week with another show. So uh, take care. I will end the recording here and then I'll cut it on Facebook. So I'm going to end the recording.